let's learn about adaptive cards. All right, so I was really surprised. I had a meeting with one of my buddies last week, and I was like, oh, yeah, there's still an adaptive card in there. And he's like, what's that? I was like, oh, I guess everyone doesn't know what adaptive cards are. So today, we're going to do two things. We're going to learn what adaptive cards are, so we kind of get an introduction of how you can create these little miniature forms and miniature little ways to display data. And then, in case you already know adaptive cards, we're going to do a pretty advanced example so you can kind of see the boundaries and see how they go. And so we'll do most of that with Power Automate and Teams, but we'll also talk about the fact that they fit in Copilot Studio. So if all that sounds like fun, then let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. The main way that we use adaptive cards today is in Power Automate, right? So we use that to send the adaptive card, usually via Teams, to collect information. So over here in Float, we'll start with just a simple, and I'll go here to Create. And then we're going to do an instant cloud flow, and then manually trigger, and then click Create. Remember, we always use the manually trigger anytime we're learning some new actions, so that way we don't have to worry about triggering it, right? Like learning triggers is a different problem. And so here we want to do is we want to hit the add action. And then if we search in Teams and then say see more here, one of the options we have is post an adaptive card and wait for response. So this is a built-in Teams action. So we're going to add that. And now it's going to be like, all right, well, how do you want to post? So we can do post as the flow bot. So it kind of comes in your Teams as workflows. Or you can do it as a Power Virtual Agent, a Copilot Studio Agent. I haven't renamed it yet. Um, Right, like for all this intents and purposes, we're going to stick with flow boss. It's going to show up as a workflows. So then we're going to say, all right, how do you want to post? So you can post directly to a channel, a chat with Flowbot, that's that workflows that we just talked about, or into a group chat. So let's go with chat with a Flowbot. Now, if you post it into a chat channel, right, it would only work for the first person interacted with it. But typically, especially if you think like approvals, we're just sending that to a specific person. And then the recipient, so the person will send that over to Chewy, Chewy the dog. Now for the message section here, it's like, all right, I need the message. You're like, all right, well, what do I type in there? So this is where you're going to put your adaptive card. Now, it's not just straight text. Or, I mean, it is text, but it's text formatted into JSON with special setups around it. So you're going to want to put that JSON into here. Now, if you don't know anything about JSON, you don't have to learn it for this, but I really, really, really recommend you learn JSON. I'll put a link to a video up there that a lot of people like to use to learn JSON, but you don't need that to keep going. Okay. But so the message here, sometimes in different parts of the tool, they'll have a builder to do this for you. This particular one does not. So then what we need to do is we need to go to a different website. And so that website is adaptivecards.microsoft.com. So this is Microsoft's lovely little site for this. You might see references out there to adaptivecards.io. It just redirects you to here now. But so this is the current site to do it. And so then this has got the documentation. It's got tips, tools. If you want to learn that next level after I kind of get you excited about them here, definitely come and spend some time here. But what we really want to do is we just want to use the create. This is the best tool for creating an adaptive card. And the really nice thing is like in Copilot Studio, when I add an adaptive card, this tool is just kind of embedded in there, right? They reuse this tool a lot. So Getting familiarity here is great. And so then down here at the bottom, you can see like right now there's just five lines of JSON. And basically those uh, lines of JSON, that's going to become what we want. And we're just going to build ourselves a little card over here on the left. So when you go to do a card, for example, the first thing you might start with is just a text block. So you just grab it, drag it up here, you drop it on here. And then now over here on the right, you can configure what shows up in the text block. And so, for example, we could say, you know, this adaptive card will help you pick a department, right? So the text, and then you can see over here on the left that it already shows that particular text. Now, there's a lot of different options here. We're not going to try to go through all of them today. We want to make sure that you take a moment, kind of look at the different things that are here and play with them as you go. But we're only going to cover the ones that you really need to get started because you can get overwhelmed if you get lost in all of these different things that are in there. Okay, so this is just a simple way to put some text on your card. Now, what I really want to do, though, is I want to give them the ability to choose a department. And so if we go over here on the left and we look down here at the bottom, we have a bunch of different inputs. So choices, dates, numbers, ratings, text, time, toggle. So all of these are just built in kind of the same way in our power apps. We just add controls. We add these controls. So if I want to drop down departments, I'm going to click on and put choice set and drag it up here, drop it in. And now it has a little bit different over here on the right to configure. Now for the uh, label, maybe we'll just change that to departments, like so. We'll get rid of the placeholder or hint text, like that. And then now up here at the top, or now I guess there's two things we gotta do, right? So first let's go down here. And so if we look, 
Right now, this dropdown has two choices. Choice one with a value one, choice two, value two. So what these are is this is the left column is what they would see, and the right column is what it would send back to the system. So for example, maybe we're going to do executive, and then we know that we need to send back executive, so we put that there. But for choice two, we're going to put human resources, like so. But then over here on the value, because of my data set, it's actually saved as HR, we'll put in just the shortcut HR. Okay, and then we can sit here and add as many choices as we want. So if we say add a new choice, then we could just do IT and IT. Okay, but so what's happening, look down here at the bottom, it is making all of this loveliness for us, right? So we don't have to worry about how, what's happening here, but this is what we're gonna need in a minute. Now there's one other thing though I need you to do. So back here at the top, Anytime in an adaptive card you have an input, right? You want to capture something from your user. It's got to have an ID so we can reference it in our flow or in our agent. And so to that end, unfortunately, they default to blank IDs. Boo! This is the only thing I don't like about the designer. It should default to like ID1, ID2, ID3. So at least something to be there so it work, but they don't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this my DPT, right? For department. And I always try to use something like my DPT because when it pulls over there, like, you know, if I see department, I'd be like, oh, which department is that, right? Like, but this my DPT, like, I know that that is the one that I made for taking the outputs, right? So that's just one of the things I do to kind of keep myself sane. Okay, so now our card looks the way that we want, but we're like, all right, I need a way to submit it. So what you have to do is you have to add an action to do that. Now, if I click here on add an action, Look at this. It's like, oh, yeah, like here's all the different actions you can do. And so there's a bunch. There's a lot to learn here. But for me and for you for right now, all we want to do is create a button so they can submit it. So we're going to say action submit. And then over on the right again, we're going to just change that from action submit to save. And bingo, bango, right? We've now got a card. Once again, all of this has been written down here for us. Who knows what it all does? I mean, we're going to figure it out. But it doesn't matter, okay? Now you could hit preview, and then you can see these are the different ways your card will look in different sizing, so it's auto going to size, so we don't have to worry about that. That's really cool, right? And that's what I want. I want to send this little department picker over in Teams. So we're going to say close, and then we're going to say copy card payload. So that just copies this JSON. You could have put cursor down here, you know, control A, control C, that type of thing, but this little copy card payload works great. So now let's switch back over to our flow. And over here in our flow, all we have to do is literally just paste in all of that, all right? It's all there, it's all blah, blah, blah. Now, we wanna then make sure though that we can get that output. So now I'm gonna go back over here, add one more action, and under data operations, we have a compose, right? This is the label of flow, if you don't use them often, I use them all the time. And then click on our little lightning bolt for our dynamic content. And then if we go to our post adaptive card and wait and say see more, Somewhere in this hot mess is going to be my department, right? So see how easy I made that by making that my department, right? If I typed in my department, I could have found it that way. But that adds that over here on the right. And so then now, I feel like we're ready to test, right? So let's just go up here, give this thing a name real quick. Test Adaptive Card and Power Automate. Look at me giving good names. We'll hit save. And now that it's saved, we can go ahead and do a test. So we'll do a test. Manually, of course, we'll say test it. We will authenticate, we'll run the flow, and done. And then if we jump into a different browser as Chewy, there you go, in his workflow chats, he's got the adaptive card, you will pick a department. And then if he chooses human resources, we'll say save. Right, you get a little thank you message. And then if we go look back in our flow under the compose, it returned the input of HR. Now with Chewy's, for whatever reason, from all my testing, his showed up under the workflows directly. And so, but in my team's workflows shows up as a chat right here in the list of my normal chats. So I don't know why Chewy's did that. My, it's never done that before, but anyway. So just wanted to point that out is that normally it would show up as a chat here. Like here, I'll show you a screenshot of mine real quick. And so you can see there that, you know, it came through as a just regular chat with everything else. All right, so that gets that working. So let's hit edit again. So now we kind of have this right way to get information from Chewy. So we use this a lot with approvals, right? We're like, hey, here's the information. We type it in that text section. And then down at the bottom, we go ahead and respond. 
Now keep in mind, if we switch back over to this Adaptive Cards website and you do a new card, you can see some other examples of cards. Notice that not all of these are inputs, right? These are just data as well. So we can use this to send information back to do it. And you can add images. When you go to add images, they have to be URLs. Like we're not gonna mess with images today or really tiny. Um, so you know we'll let you expand on that yourself, but do note that these are ways that you can send these back. And remember the two primary places we send them are either into Teams messages or Teams conversations, or we send them into um, Copilot Studio in there as well, right? So we can use them in kind of both of those places. Now, since we've done this though, let's go ahead and switch back over here and let's make this a little bit more complicated, right? So we've made this simple. Hopefully you've got the idea. Right, the main thing to understand is that this text just has to be in the format of an adaptive card, but how this text gets there, whether you pulled it in through dynamic content, formulas, variables, all of that wouldn't matter. And all of the different ways that you can create these cards are over there on the other side, right? I switch back over there again. So, you know, there's so many things here. I've only used maybe 10, 20% of them. You know, I've used all the inputs because we're always creating these mini forms but there's all of these other ways to create that rich experience. And so that's coming from these different card elements and you're just dragging and dropping them out here. And you can have multiple, right? So we also want to get a date here, right? We just dropped it up there and then we'd just go to the right here, configure it, make sure we set the ID and we would have a date. Because at the end, it's generating this structured JSON that is in version 1.5 of the adaptive card language and it is happy. Hey, before we get into the advanced examples, just a quick, Note that we uh, would love to help you with this stuff, right? We have training classes, we have consulting, we have mentoring, anything that you need to get help with adaptive cards or any of the Power Platform or Copilot Studio over here at powerapps91.com. We're happy to help you. All right, let's go see the advanced examples. Okay, now I want to switch gears and show you two examples of a little bit more advanced so you can kind of get some ideas and see a little bit more of this in action. So first, let's go over here and look at this flow. And so what we're going to do in this particular one is we're going to say, hey, when this gets triggered, go get the list of departments. So go get the dynamic list straight from SharePoint. We're going to clean up that data and we're going to post an adaptive card that shows you the list of those departments. Then depending on what department you choose, we're going to go fetch from SharePoint the department that is associated with that and get all the people back for that department. We're going to do some more data cleanup and then we're going to finally post a card back that displays that. Okay, so let's kind of look at how that works. We'll go ahead and hit test and then we'll just run one of these and we'll say go and then I'll pull over my teams. And so down here at the bottom, you can see it's like, hey, choose a department. All right. And so then this list is the list of departments that came from our SharePoint list. Pretty cool. And so then we'll say executive and then we'll say save. We'll get a pleasant little thank you for your response. And then look at that, we get a set of, you know, bulleted or checkboxed uh, list of employees. So how's that really working? So back over here, the get items is just a straight get items from the department. So then what we need to do is we need to select down and say, all right, from that list, all right, that's all of the rows with all the columns. And we want these two columns back, the title column and the value column. Uh, but we're gonna set both of those to title and value because remember when we looked at the JSON, that was the way that the JSON is structured for a dropdown list. The compose step is not required, but this is the formula that I then use. I'm doing a join on that table of results with a comma in between because in the JSON down below, it needs a comma in between. So then we post an adaptive card. Everything is the same here. The only difference is that the choices is now being derived here. So that curly bracket and then title and double quotes, colon, um, and then the value, right, in double quotes, all of that is just being put there. I probably just put it on the screen so you can see what that would look like natively rendered. But so we're using an expression here. Now one tip is when you use an expression here, all the dynamic content no longer works, right? If we go here and add ourselves a compose real quick on this step, we're gonna see that if I go to dynamic content, notice that from post an adaptive card, the whole my department is not there anymore. It's still there, it still works, but the system doesn't know how to suggest it anymore. So if you're gonna use any dynamic content, you always wanna use the dynamic content with a hard-coded JSON here. So put your full JSON in here, use the dynamic content, 
Then when it's all set up, then come back here and put in your formula, okay? So then compose two, oh, well this one's actually, oh, it's empty because it's wanted to status, so let's delete that again before I break something and forget. And so then the get items one, department equals, and then body data, uh, my department, right? So there's using that JSON still, or using that dynamic content, it just can't be selected automatically for us like we just showed you. So then from that, we're going to do a select, and here we're doing a concat of the first name column and the last name column, uh, just in a select statement. But then that way it's creating a new table, right, an array with square brackets that is Shane space Young, Nicola space Young, right? All four people in there. So we have them in an array. So then, then we can use a compose. Once again, you could delete this compose out. This compose shows you that we're then doing a uh, join on that same select statement. And then that is generating the JSON that we need because down here in the post a card back, we're then saying, look, not only employees from the executive, right? This is how we're pulling in the department. So we've done that before. But then down here, this is the crazy formula that I came up with to make all of those, you know, check marks, little fake bullet points um, come through, all right? And if we kind of go back to the test section, Okay, and then we just click on that last test run. And if you go down here and click on this, you'll be able to actually look and see, you know, what was the JSON. So over here, this is showing you the rendered JSON completely. And so you could scroll through here and find, did it render the way you want? So if you're troubleshooting. And so for example, if we keep going, look, employees from the executive department. So executive got pulled in exactly the way you'd expect, right? There's they're just text, it just wants text, doesn't care that you got there with an expression. And then when we get down here to the whole list of people, look at that. So check mark, Nicola Young, and then these two uh, forward or backslash ends, right? That's how you do a new line. You have to do two of them with these teams cards to make them work. And then there's the Shane record, the Jennifer record, and the Sarah record. So at the end of the day, it's the same JSON we'd expect. It's just getting computed through a formula, an expression, a uh, variable, an action. It doesn't matter, right? Like As long as it spits out the text it wants, it is happy. So there you go. So there's a pretty robust one, but hopefully giving you a good idea of what you can do. Right. And also, if you didn't notice before over here, I noticed that I went ahead and made this a different color. I made it a different font size. Like you can get into the display. We talked about doing pictures before. I meant to put a picture there and I forgot. Um, but, you know, play with those things over there. There's a lot you can do with adaptive cards. All right. One more example. So over here in Copilot Studio, we also use these when we want to either collect inputs or kind of display things back nicely. So for example, let me ask my agent, can I be the admin of my PC, All right? This invokes a topic. So if you use adaptive cards in Copilot Studio, you're gonna to use uh, topics. And so then this is just a normal question. So we're gonna say I want it to install software, but then it's going to go and connect to my SharePoint list. And look at that, we pulled back a dynamic picture, whether, so you choose software or hardware, we see a different image. Here's the list of supported software hardware and then actual proper bullet points. And then would you like to open a ticket? Yes or no. This is an adaptive card just stuck right in the middle of my uh, chat. So if you want a better experience for displaying or collecting information, little mini forms, remember, you can do that. And if we were to look at the topic, you'll see that adaptive cards are absolutely just an option inside here. And if we click on it, then there's two different ways you can do them. You can either do hard-coded JSON, which is what you're usually doing, but if you want to incorporate formulas, then you use uh, the PowerFX formula language, right? So if global var category equals software, use this image. If not, use this image. And then down here, where I was pulling in the dynamic list, right? Oh, where'd I go? Right there. So concat, and then the uh, list variable, and then the whole title chart in, right? Because this is using markdown, um, for the way that it displays. So it's a little bit of a different syntax. So not something I'm in the mood to explain today. It's way too detailed, but I want to get those ideas going with you that adaptive cards have a lot of points. So if you have any questions, comments, ideas, please leave them below. Always looking for more ideas of what you'd like to cover. If you want help doing any of this type of stuff here at powerapps91.com, we can help you with adaptive cards for Power Apps, Power Automate, Power Copilot Studio, whatever this thing's called. You know, all of those fun things are right in our wheelhouse with helping you. We can hop on for 30 minutes or 30 days or 30 years. You let us know. All right. And with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day.